Little Cora, little Cora Lou, she's so pretty and so fancy. Are you resting, little girl? Are you tired? She's exhausted. Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I have got some work that I want to share with you this week. Got a little bit of machine work, a little bit of welding, some fabrication. I am doing a job for a startup company that who is who is researching recycling of small electrical components, which is tough. Trust me, it's it's a tough business. Recycling circuit boards, stuff like that, because the metals, the precious metals that are in those are so small, it's hard to sort through those and get the valuable bits out and recycle any of it, to be honest. I'm doing a job for a recycling company, a startup recycling company, building one part of a huge process, and I want to share that with you. So let's go outside really super quick. I want to show you the weather because it's beautiful today. It really is. And we'll talk. Where has Steve been? Is he dead? You know, well, I'll answer that question in just a second. So as soon as I slide these doors open to show you how beautiful the weather is, we got rain clouds rolling in, dark clouds rolling in, and it's actually starting to sprinkle. That is the case here in Kentucky where I live. They say if you don't like the weather, just wait 15 or 20 minutes and it is likely to change. And that is very, very true. But over the last month, we went from skeleton trees, basically no leaves at all, to a complete a complete rainforest. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mid 70s, probably 60% humidity, 65% humidity. So a little bit sticky, but it is very nice. And there's the sun just you now trying to pop back through. So I want to take a second and put some things to rest. A bunch of questions that I've been asked over the last several months. And that is, where are you at, Steve? You usually post every week. And I've touched on this before, but I really want to try to you know, put it to bed. So yes, I am still alive, obviously. And no, I'm not giving up on my YouTube channel or quitting making videos. I've just been, life has dealt our family, the Summers family here, a bunch of shit sandwiches. Excuse my French, but that's just the truth over the last eight months or so. The one really bright side is that I did become a grandfather, which is awesome. Granddaughter's doing great, but both my parents got sick at the same time. They're elderly. I've had to been have had to deal with that some. Uh, their dog Buddy passed away uh, here some time back. That was a stressor, along with a million other things. It's just been really one thing after another. My daughter spent some time in the hospital. Elizabeth's been dealing with cluster headaches. And that literally is the tip of the iceberg of what's been going on. It's just been a, a deluge of unfortunate events for us. And I'm not one to get online and start complaining, nor start spouting a bunch of personal business of mine, uh, because I just don't think that it's cool. Complaining, there's nothing cool about complaining. And I'd just rather, if I can't say something good, I'd just rather say nothing at all. But in order to put people's minds at ease and let people know that yes I am alive no I'm not quitting um, you know I have to tell everybody what's been going on it's just been I've been dealing with a bunch of stress we all have that we've been trying to you know get over I've just been having to put my time where it's most effective uh, and that is with my family lately for my own sake and sanity and just for the welfare of all of us so that's where I've been and I'm hoping that I'll have you know, that we can get back to a normal uh, video production schedule. But, you know, until things get back to the way they were, you know, I can't make any promises. So thank you for all of your concern. And I apologize if you wrote me a message and I didn't respond to you directly. So over here at the Do-All Milling Machine, on the table I have a 316 stainless steel flange that is identical to this flange in every way except for one. And that is we are tapping the holes in the flange on this one. It's the mating flange to this. And this one is just uh, clearance drilled for the bolt to pass through. And I'm using my old school tapping head to get these holes in this flange because if you had to do it by hand it'd take forever. I want to show you the setup real quick, show you this tapping head. We'll talk about it a little bit as we go. I've got half of them done already. So we'll blast through this other half super quick and then and you'll see how fast it is to do and then uh, we'll move on to something else. I just want to show you what I'm using. So for a lubricant for the tap, I like this Veracut Molly, Molly D. This is some really, really good stuff. A little bit pricey, but a bottle like this, if you use it sparingly, it'll last a long time. And it just seems to do such an awesome job. And as far as clamping, I've just got a quick clamp here, which a guy could make from half of a C-clamp, weld a foot to it. Makes you know, it makes changing setups or adjusting things really quick. And then I've got one toe clamp over on this side just to kind of, you know, 
give me a little extra rigidity. I've got a plug tap in here, and I'm just lining it up over the center of the hole. A little clamp down here, just like that. I will tap the hole and then loosen everything up, move it over, you know, and start over. So with this tapping head, just so you know, there's no reversing of the spindle motor. As I push down on this, it will drive the tap in with a clutch mechanism in here, and when I lift up on the quill, it will reverse the direction of the tap and spin itself out. These can be picked up swap meets or eBay or places like that, and they're a major time saver when you've got a bunch of holes to tap. Trust me, they are. They're, this is what this tool is designed to do, and it does it well. So let's get started and uh, you know get us some holes tapped. So just a. A little bit of lube on the tap there. And the harder I push down on this handle, the harder it engages the clutch and pushes that tap in. So, and then when I want to reverse, I just lift the handle and it threads right out. And that is one hole tapped. Just an amazing time saver these tapping heads are. So just snug that down. My little clamp here. Back on. And tap another one. So hopefully you can see I'm just running the tap down into the T-slot on the table. This 316, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of tricky to tap. If this tap makes it through all these holes, I'll be happy. So if you have a really nice drill press, like a gear-driven drill press that's got a lot of torque that you can reverse the spindle on immediately, you know, you can do this same thing. This tapping head goes faster in reverse on the exit than it does on the inlet. So it, it's just a, I guess, a way to speed up production. It is geared different on the reverse than it is on the on the feed, I guess you'd say. You can really go through quite a bit of holes quickly with this. And if you're doing really small ones, really small holes, if you want, you know, something that you could hold even, like a little piece of plastic or something, man, you could blast, blast through. Or a quick fixture with just some uh, levers to pop down instead of 
you know, a toe clamp and stuff, but you get the idea. So all those holes pretty darn quickly. So now I'm just going to remove this tapping head and then put a, a drill chuck and a countersink in there and remove the raised burrs that I've got on both sides of this, uh, these threaded holes. I'm just going to go blast through those really quick. It wouldn't have to be done, but it sure makes a nicer job when you've got a really nicely finished edge around the holes, just like that. Just looks, looks professional, looks finished. So I want to touch on this tapping head one more time super quick. This thing has a lot more feedback through the quill than if you've never used one than probably what you would think. You can really get a good feel of what the tap is doing by the amount of pressure that you have to push on this thing in order to get it to the tap to go through. They're not just, it doesn't just drive the tap through as if it was attached to the spindle. If it gets jammed up, you you know, and you can tell it by the force that you push and you can just reverse back out and it'll spin that tap right back out. And then if you need to go back in and finish that hole, well, this thing will kind of self-center by the way that the chuck and stuff is. It's kind of a little bit loose in there and it's pretty sensitive. It'll pick the threads up, the partial threads right back up and you can follow through and finish out your hole. This is a great tool to add to to your arsenal if you do multiple hole tappings that is I mean if you don't tap many holes then it's not obviously something that you probably are interested in but these can be had for a relatively reasonable price and they are a huge time saver when it comes to tapping tapping holes that's for sure so here's part of the job that I'm working on and it's a bit hard to explain actually what this thing is but it I'll try it is the outlet of a ball mill. Imagine a 55 gallon drum, like a big oil drum, laid on its side on some rollers, powered by a motor, and then inside of that 55 gallon drum is a bunch of steel balls and a chemical soup that pounds electronic circuit boards and stuff and basically breaks it down. Well, this is one side. There's an inlet and an outlet of a continuous fed process. This is the, this is the outlet. I fab this up, this uh, big graphite bearing goes uh, on this side, and both the inlet and outlet are held together with uh, uh, like bell cranks or spring pressure, and it creates a seal uh, between the inlet and outlet, so some of the gases and stuff that are generated, uh, some of the fumes, don't escape from this, from this ball mill. So, there's obviously there's more to it than that, but that's the gist of what this thing is. These are arms for uh, clamping all this unit together and keeping it from these from rotating with the drum. So what I need to do, this flange that I just got done tapping, I need to weld that to the face, weld the threaded portion to the face. I'm not exactly sure what this attaches to, but whatever. It gets welded to the face. I didn't design this. I've just been asked to make it, so you know. It gets welded to the face. I need to finish weld this thing. Also 
have to scribe a line here and blast a hole in this thing where I can weld on this 2 inch NPT 316 stainless steel pipe nipple. It needs to be welded right yonder and I need to finish weld this guy out. So let's uh, blast the hole in this super quick and then we'll move on to something else. So there's where we're going to be welding this. I want to get it. I want to get it pretty pretty much centered here, and I've already got a center line marked, both uh, horizontal and vertically, and I've got a center punch there. So now I just need to measure out. Really, I need uh, the internal diameter. It's two inches one hundred thousandths. So that would be one inch fifty thousandths to set my calipers to one inch. 50. It doesn't matter. Like this is literally going to be blasted out with a with a plasma. But I just want to have a cut to line, just like that. And then I'm going to scrub it. And then we'll go over to the plasma cutter, and we will try to blast this out. I'll finish it up with a burr, probably, and a or a carbide burr and air air tool. So let's take just a second and do a pickup update. Now we built two pickups on the channel. This one we just kind of barely did it. We did a few videos on it, but I built this for my wife. It's been about a year since we got it. I pulled it out of a field where it had set for uh, probably a decade or better. Had no motor, no transmission. So on the channel, uh, I showed we put a 6 liter LS in it and a 4 L80E. I put a set of wheels and tires on it. Here recently I dropped it three inches, three inches in the front and actually four inches in the back. So three inch drop spindles and a four inch, uh, well, drop shackles and spring hangers in the back that brought it down about four inches. It's got a really nice stance now, fits the wheels, fit in the wheel wheels really good and, and I like the look of it. Makes it a lot easier for Elizabeth to get in and out of as well. And it didn't hurt the usefulness of this, this on-road truck uh, trailer puller. She, my wife Elizabeth, has fell in love with Johnny Cash, the crew cab, and uh, I could not be happier. She reminds me daily that I built this truck for her. Every time I'm tinkering with it or I'm like, I'm going to take it to town, she's like, that's my truck, by the way, just in case you just forgot. You know how it is. We both like this truck a lot. It has been almost completely trouble-free. You can just reach through the window, hit the key, it fires right up, and has not given us even a little bit of trouble. Other than steering box did start leaking, which I had one around here, changed that, and it had oil cooler lines start leaking. I've tinkered with it here and there, but pretty much dropped an old used motor in here and transmission, set of wheels, redone the brakes, put exhaust on it. We did freshen up the interior, and we've been driving this thing, like driving it a lot. We've went to several little car shows and stuff just for fun. We put a windshield in it because the original one was so chipped up. You couldn't hardly see through it when the sun would shine or when it would rain. So we did do that. And trust me, if you own one of these trucks, you don't want to have to put a windshield in them. It's awful job. It's a three-person job. Um, I'm sure there's guys out there that I can do that in my sleep with one arm tied behind my back. Well, I can't. And uh, it's a three-person job is what it took. It was really a lot of trouble on the other truck as well. Uh, anyway, the gaskets that hold these in, is, it's, they're in there tight. So lowered it, new windshield, put a steering box in it. I would jump in this thing with the family, shoot across the U.S. without any concern for this thing breaking down. It's been up to this point that reliable where I, mean, I would trust it to go about anywhere. Only thing I'd be worried about is a flat tire. You don't want that on this. Let's look at the brown truck. So here's a quick look at the 1985. This is my K10. The one we spent about a year on the channel turning this from what was my everyday firewood pickup truck until this. Uh, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful truck now. But I used to stack firewood on the top of this thing, and it was beat and rusted from one end to the other. And now it's just a, you know a beautiful truck. So. It's been doing great. I did have a heater core go out of it the other day and it just totally puked all over the floor, passenger floorboard and a freeze inside of the truck. And yeah, it was a nightmare. Had to pull all of the carpet and stuff out of it, pull the entire dash all the way apart, basically, because it has to come apart to put a heater core in here. And then the heater box itself has to come completely apart. It's a big job. 
to put a heater core in one of these, although there are obviously worse vehicles to put a heater core in. These are no fun, that's what I'm trying to say. So that did happen to this truck. But other than that, you know, it's been, it's been pretty reliable as well. So there's a look at the two pickup trucks, uh, you know, that we've uh, featured on the channel. Doing really good. So to get our hole in the side of this thing, I'm just gonna simply blast, rough it out, blast that hole out with the plasma cutter, and then I'll come back with a carbide burr with an air tool, clean it up a bit. This is just gonna remove the bulk of material for us. This is the XP45, a really nice plasma cutter. Love this thing. Get my gloves, gloves on, get my gloves on. tool big carbide cylindrical burr I'm just gonna dress that up a bit and that's all it'll need So once I get this welded together, I'll come in here with that burr and clean it up. That way it's a nice, smooth, smooth hole. Because our hole that we cut in with the plasma cutter is just, just a hair on the small side. Not that it really matters that much, but, uh, you know, we're going to clean it up, make it look nice. Also, I'm going to mix up some flux. This is uh, Type B solar flux. This stuff's awesome. It's a lifetime supply right there. Um, we'll mix some of this up. We'll wipe it on the back side of where we're going to be welding. That way we don't get a bunch of oxidation on the back side from, from the heat of welding this on. And once we get it welded on, we'll come in with the Dremel or the die grinder and we'll clean the hole up. That way we get a nice smooth match for, these, for the bore of this fitting and then the hole that we cut in. A little bit of methanol.
I will not on the ground. And try to pick it up for two or three minutes with these gloves on. Now I gotta finish weld this piece here to the inside. Also gotta weld on my flange on the outside and I gotta clean this bore up. love it when you sharpen your tungsten and then almost immediately dip it right back in the puddle.
so there we go. That looks pretty good. It just needs to be watertight, that's all. There's not a ton of pressure on this thing. I mean, I'm pretty certain that the, the customer will be completely happy with that. I did have to open up these holes just a little bit because they're, <laughs> there's a ton of them. And, uh, you know, I went around and made sure there was no interference no matter which way I put this thing. I did not originally place these holes in, in these flanges. So I had to open up the clearance just a little bit on these 3 8, 16 bolts to where I could go around, make sure with a you know, bolted tight on two, go around and get them all in without them rubbing the flange. So there's just no interference. Hopefully that makes sense. But that looks pretty good. And for all intents and purposes, as far as I'm concerned anyway, this piece is done. All right, guys, that is all I have time to put together for this week anyway. I did deliver that part that I just that I just made. I delivered it to the customer this morning. He was completely satisfied with it, which makes me happy. You know, anytime you hand somebody a part and they look at it and they smile because it's what they envisioned in their mind, or maybe even more than what they envisioned. So that is one of many parts that I've made. I've got a ton of machining footage that I look forward to sharing with you here in the, in the near future, hopefully. But for this week, that's all I got. So that is it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. I appreciate it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.